Okay, so today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about one of the newest features that we've added to the LeoStream 9 platform, which is our support for the Google Cloud platform. Uh, really, that kind of rounded out our support for all the major public cloud players because we already supported AWS and Azure. So now along with GCP, you have support for all the three big vendors. So if we want to think about why you might want to use LeoStream with Google Cloud Platform, well, really, it's it's the same as with any of the other public clouds that we support. It's all about allowing you to minimize and optimize the compute costs and the utility of the instances that you're running up in the cloud. And there's a number of features we have that allow you to do that. One, which you'll see in the demo I'll do here in a bit, is about managing capacity. So you might want to have one machine that's ready for a user to log in. And then when somebody starts to use that, you'll spin up another so it's ready for the next user. But you don't want to just have machines running up in the cloud if no one needs them because you pay for that compute. And then um, another thing is that you might want to have machines there that are persistent if you have applications that you're running up in the cloud. But again, to avoid paying for comp compute, you want to automate the power state of these machines. So you'll use LeoStream to power on the machine when the user requests the connection to it. That way the machine is there and ready. They don't have to wait for it to launch, but they you're not paying for the compute costs again while the machine's not running. And we see that come in use a lot when you're talking about sharing pools of machines. So we have customers who have pools of machines in Google Cloud Platform that are running really pretty graphic intense applications. And they want to share those, say, 10 machines with 20 users. And you can use using LeoStream, you can manage the access so that you can make sure that users get attached to machines that are available. And you can also monitor the user for you know, when they've gone idle. So you can release and power the machine down. Again, all about minimizing your costs. The other thing is that by leveraging the LeoStream gateway as part of the architecture with LeoStream, you can keep those instances locked in a private cloud. The last thing you want to do is give your instances a public IP address so that anything that's out there scanning the internet looking for public IP addresses can find it. With LeoStream, you just leave the instances locked in a private cloud, and then you can use the LeoStream gateway as the access point for all of your users. And that supports not just you know, standard protocols like VNC and RDP that also supports these high performance protocols such as, you know, uh, HPRGS, Mectine, TGX, a handful of others. So again, I mentioned when we have customers running um, high performance graphics applications, things like Media Composer, or maybe you have CAD applications, you can use the GPU enabled instances in GCP and then use LeoStream to manage and share access to those. The last kind of point, I'll point out here is that by using LeoStream, you really can build a hybrid environment. So the idea here is retain your on-premises applications so you can still leverage those while bursting into the cloud for additional capacity as, it, as it's needed. So that's all great, but really it's always better to see things in action. So let's go up here to the demo. Just so you can see, here's my Google Cloud Platform project that I have going in here. The connection broker can run in Google, Google Cloud. We run on a CentOS or RHEL 7.8 machine. So I just spun that up in Google Cloud and then used our simple little RPM file to install the broker. And now it's all up and running. What I do have here, you see there's this machine here called Windows Master. I wanted to use LeoStream to model a non-persistent workflow. So again, have the machine created when the user needs it, delete it when the user is done with it. But I want those machines to have the applications and everything else, maybe some data that's needed for the user to get their job done. So I created myself a master here. Again, has all the applications and data, also has the LeoStream agent running on it. The agent's important because it's going to talk to the broker and provide information about the user's session. So that's how we can control when does that machine get powered down or deleted. It's based on these notifications that come from the agent. So that's what this Windows master desktop was for. I created that and then I actually created an image of it. If you want to use LeoStream to provision in Google Cloud, we provision based on images here. There are different ways that you can create such as templates. Uh, you can create kind of master golden images in Google Cloud Platform, but this is the one that you need to use if you want to provision inside of LeoStream. 
So that's kind of the quick overview of what I have running in Google Cloud here. Now here is the broker itself. So I'm going to log in as the main administrator. The key for the integration with Google Cloud Platform is all through the center that we have here. So here I've created a center for Google Cloud and it's very straightforward. I tell you the project that I want to manage and then I created an account inside of GCP that has permissions to execute the APIs we use to integrate with GCP. And if you need more information on what those permissions are and what it looks like, we have a quick start guide that you can look at that'll tell you how to do that. So I created my center here. Each center is attached to a particular region and a particular project. So if you want to model multiple projects or a set up in multiple regions, it's very straightforward, just create extra centers. As I mentioned, we are a hybrid cloud platform. So you see, I actually, just for fun, in my demo environment, I have all the different clouds set up as well as our on-prem vCenter here. So that's really the key for the Google Cloud Platform. And once you create that center or any center, Broker reaches out into that center and inventories what you already have. So here I see that one machine that I've already provisioned, and then my images show up here on the images page. So this is how you know that you've created the right type of image inside of GCP so you can use it for provisioning in LeoStream. Now, most of the cool cloud-specific things you can do with LeoStream are really tied into our pooling. So if I look, I have an example pool here, which I'm calling Cloud Lab. So the idea is I wanted to say, here's a lab, a group of machines I'm going to use for a lab for students that they were logging in. But again, I've got one machine waiting there. It's powered off, so it's not racking up any kind of compute costs. And then what I want to happen is when a student comes in, I want to power that machine on, connect them to it, and in the meantime, spin up another machine for the next student. The spinning up logic is handled down here in the provisioning section. So as I mentioned, I want one spare. Uh, in my case, I'm going to stop after two, but you could set this to however, uh, however large a limit you want. The idea here is you don't want to over provision inside the cloud because again, you're paying for those. So you might want to cap the number of machines we create. Could also be because you've got a quota in, in Google. If you want, you can even do this based on time of day. So if you want to use Google Cloud as a place to burst up particular classrooms or different types of applications that are based on time of day, you can actually do that too. Then down here in provisioning parameters, you just tell us how we should provision that machine inside of Google Cloud. So the key is giving it a naming convention. I almost always, when I'm provisioning in a cloud or in any kind of virtualization layer, define my pool based on the name of the machine because it's something I have control over when I provision. So here I'm provisioning or defining my pool based on name. And so down here when I'm provisioning, I'm provisioning it with that name. So I'm guaranteed that desktop shows up in this pool. From there, it's very straightforward. I pick the template, that image that I created, say which zone I want to pick, I want to provision the machine into and the machine type. So here is where you would say, is this a GPU enabled instance or is it just more of a standard size instance? Now this checkbox here to initialize a machine as deletable, here's where you can tell LeoStream, is this a persistent machine or a non-persistent machine? You know, one of the things you can do with our provisioning is actually pre-populate a, a set of persistent machines. So you created your master image, it has your media composer, whatever else you want on there, and now you want to create 10 of them. You can just come into LeoStream here and say, you know what, create 10 machines for me. And then when you save the form, it would create them all and that just saved you a whole bunch of button clicking inside of Google. I'll put these back where I got them. So that's a persistent model. If you want the non-persistent model, you want LeoStream to terminate that instance when the user is done, then you tick this flag here to tell us that the machine is deletable. We try really hard not to delete something you don't want us to. So always tell us exactly what it is that you want LeoStream controlling. So there really, that is again, the key and to integrating with Google Cloud Platform, everything else in the broker is standard, no matter which environment you're using, all the protocol plans that allow you to say, how do I want to connect the user? All the release plans that say, when does that machine get deleted? So as an example, a very useful thing to do when you're working in a cloud is to say, well, when the user logs out, I want to release the machine back to its pool. That release event triggers the when desktop is released 
section of the plan, which here we're saying, okay, give five more minutes and then go ahead and delete the machine. Again, freeing up that compute cost. In the persistent model case, it's really the power control plans that are really useful for, in cloud environments because here's where you can actually control the power state. So in this case, I'm saying when the desktop is released, you know, user logs out, machine gets released, go ahead and just shut the machine down. And that way it's not running when no one's using it. So to see what this looks like from a user's perspective and to kind of show you the provisioning bits, this is our LeoStream Connect client. Uh, it's soft, simple software client, runs on Windows, Linux, Mac. I'm going to log in as a user. Now, what's happening in the background there, you can see on the system log page, and actually the window opened up on the other. You see I am have a status window here, and the reason that's going on is because in the background here, that machine is being powered on, and you see another one got provisioned. And you can see that all happening here in the LeoStream logs. So here was the login for Mabel, the machine that was offered, I requested a connection to it, that's starting it, and now it's waiting for the desktop to start and be ready for the connection. So in my case, it's going to launch a simple RDP connection, so it's waiting for the RDP port to start up. Because Mabel got assigned to that machine, that triggered the provisioning limits, which then kicked off a new machine. And so you can see that all happening, and you'll see the new machine appear here. So it's still in starting mode because it's waiting for all the ports to open up, and then once that's all complete, it'll launch the connection. And in this case, I'm actually launching the connection through the LeoStream gateway. So after the machine starts, the connection broker is going to ask the LeoStream gateway to open up some forwarding rules so that the connection can be tunneled into the Google private cloud and connects me here from my house into the private network. Of course, it's opening on the other screen. So here it is. <laughs> Sorry about that, it opened on the other screen. But here, if we look at the log again, you'll see the forwarding port getting added, and then the RDP connection is established. Once that happens, now you can see that this user is assigned to that machine. So you always know who's using what machine and when. And now, if the user comes in here and logs out, that connection is going to close. That event is going to get captured by LeoStream, and that's going to invoke the plans, both the release and the power control plans, that occur when a logout occurs. And that will end up unassigning me from the machine. And in the end, it's going to power it back down because that happens to be how I have my power control plan set. And I can see that happening again here inside of Google Cloud Platform. There it goes, now it's shutting down. So again, all about automating power state and capacity as a way for you to make sure users have access to the things they need while making sure that you're not over allocating and have an, an overpaying for resources in the cloud. And that's it. If you need any more information, feel free to drop us a line and we'll talk to you soon.